All right, so um, <clears throat> so today we're going to start talking about some different classifications of triangles and then using those relationships to perform some math. Um, and so we're going to put some things together. Now, we're going to talk a lot about triangles in this class. Now, I get it. It's 2024. You got TikTok at your fingertips. Like triangles just don't seem like they're all that important in your world. And I understand that. But as you saw with what we were doing with some of this stuff with Euler's line and the nine point circle, if you were studying math back in the 16 and 1700s, you were studying triangles because there are so many relationships and it's so fundamental to geometry that it's just a key concept. OK, so we got to study it as well. Gentlemen in the back. It's very distracting. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about some naming of our triangles. We're going to start by classifying our triangles by their angles. You can see that right over here. In fact, I'm going to highlight this. So our first conversation is going to be classifying our triangles by their angles. Now, when we have three acute angles, real quick, tell your neighbor what it means to have an acute angle. What does it mean? Tell your neighbor. Good. I heard you. You said it should be less than 90 degrees, right? If we have three of those, then we have what we call an acute triangle. Now, if we have one obtuse angle, like you see in this picture, show your neighbor right now with your finger, where is the obtuse angle and tell them how do you know? Tell them how you know. Where is it in the picture? Tell them how you know. Yeah, you should have told them that it's more than 180 degrees and you should have said it's this corner of the triangle right here. And you can only have one obtuse angle in a triangle. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, that makes this an obtuse triangle. So if you have one obtuse angle, you have an obtuse triangle. All right, same concept you see here. Well, we have a 90 degree angle here. So if we have a right angle, we have a right triangle. Right triangles are going to become really important for us as we move forward. Like, in fact, our entire unit on trigonometry that we're going to talk about is right triangle trigonometry. Now, there's more trigonometry than that. That's just basic trig. But that's what we're going to do in this class. And then when you move on past algebra two, you'll start talking about bigger trig. But for right now, we're just going to talk about right triangle trig. Now, I'm pretty confident that most of you probably knew these off the top of your head. But let's talk about this last one over here. So here, you can see that I have these congruence markings on this triangle here, okay? So what do you think this triangle would be called? Anybody wanna take a shot at what you think it'd be called? Go ahead, Abby. Okay, good, good idea, congruent triangle. No, I like it, that's good because it's got some congruent angles. That is not exactly the name though because when we talk about congruent triangles, uh, which we're gonna talk a lot about, we're gonna be talking about two separate shapes and comparing them, but good, I like your guess. Uh, perfect or regular? No, but good. I like I like how you where you would come up with that. That's good. Equilateral. Okay, now let's think about that for a second. Lateral refers to length, which would be like the side of a triangle. But this is not. We're not saying the sides are the same here. We're saying the angles are the same. Now, equidistant distance again would be a side measure. What did you guys say? Angle. That's exactly what it is. It's equiangular. Yeah, good, nice way to work through that. Equiangular, like that. Okay, so that's how we that's how we indicate the name of this one. This was an this one is an equiangular triangle. So if we were putting this in groupings by angles, we would have acute, obtuse, right, or equiangular. Okay, those are our groupings of which we can organize our things. Now, this is going to come into play, uh, especially when we get to trig. But you know, continuing on is this concept. So we're going to take some notes over here. Let's write this down. Okay, here we go. So in triangles, an angle's size is directly related to its opposite sides length. We're gonna do some underlining. So in triangles, an angle size is directly related to its opposite sides length. 
Okay, everybody look at me real quick. All right, watch up here. I'm gonna make an angle with the palm of my hands here, okay? Now, imagine, if you will, a line to make a triangle stretching in between my middle fingers right here, okay? What happens to the length of this line right here when I make the angle bigger? The line, the line got longer, didn't it, right? And what happens when I make the angle smaller? The line got shorter. So depending on the size of the angle, the side of the triangle that is opposite of it is directly related to that opening. Does that make sense? See what I'm doing there? Okay. Now, let's take, for example, this obtuse triangle here. Okay. So in this obtuse triangle, right, we can see that this bottom corner angle, the obtuse angle, this is the biggest angle down here. Okay. So I'm going to kind of highlight that in green. That's the biggest angle right there. And you'll notice that clearly when you look at this triangle, it's across from the longest side. Biggest angle is going to project to the longest side. Does that make sense? So an angle projects to its opposite side. Now, we already have this language in our wheelhouse because we just were talking about like orthocenter. Orthocenter connected a vertex, corner of a triangle, to its opposite side, right? So we have this idea of opposite being across the triangle for us, right? Even a midpoint connected to its opposite vertex. That would be the vertex across the triangle. So you're keeping that language in there. Well, the biggest angle is going to lead to the largest side. Now let's talk about right triangles for a second, right? In a right triangle, we have, of course, our 90 degree angle. What kind of an angle do we have here and here? How would you classify those two angles? Acute. Yeah, those are acute angles, right? Let's jot that in there. So we have an acute angle here, and we also have an acute angle right here. So acute is what again? What's the definition for acute? Less than 90. So then the biggest angle in this triangle is what? The 90 degree angle, right? And the 90 degree angle, what side in a right triangle is opposite the 90 degree angle? Yeah, there is a name for it. The hypotenuse, which is always the longest side. So now we can see why we, we talked about before that the hypotenuse in our A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? That's our C length, right? And so we talked about why the, this is why the hypotenuse is always the longest side in a right triangle, because it's opposite the biggest angle. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about this one then. This is kind of interesting. If we had this angle, whatever the measure was, projecting out here to this side, and then we had the same size angle over here projecting out to this side. In fact, watch me up here for a second. Watch. Right? Imagine that line that's stretching in between my fingers here. Right? If I took my angle that was going like this, and I just turned it over here without changing the size of it, what happened to the line? It stayed the same, didn't it, right? Angle size directly relates to side length. So then if the angle sizes are all the same, what could we say about the side lengths? They must also all be congruent. Which is what classification now, Genevieve? What is that classification? That is the equilateral triangle right there, right? The equal side length, equal lateral, right? So, so we can actually say this. All equal angular triangles are also equilateral having the same length. Okay, question. Does that work going the other direction? Are all equilateral triangles equiangular? Well, if all equiangular triangles are equilateral, wouldn't that make all equilateral triangles equiangular, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is one of those situations where we can turn around and walk a different direction on the same sidewalk. That had a fancy geometry name. I gave it to you last time we talked. And what is the fancy geometry name for? I'm going to turn around and walk this, the different direction on the same sidewalk. Begins with a buy. Buy something. No? Good try. Buy begins with a C. C O. C O N. No, good try. 
by conditional. The condition goes both directions. It's by conditional. All right, there you go. Good. All right. Well, okay. Okay, cool. Hey, so um, just real quick, so that we can talk triangles uh, pretty well. Watch up here real quick. Hi. Hello. Watch up here. Okay. When you see the name of a triangle written like this, okay, what we're talking about is these are the vertices of the triangle. So if I'm talking about triangle CDE, right, I'm talking about the triangle that starts at C and stretches to D and then back out to E and then watch this, it goes from E back to C. So it's like C to D and then D to E and then it swoops back to the beginning E to C like that. Cool? Okay, you need to know that. That's going to become really important when we dig deeper into comparing triangles. So right now, what I'd like you to do is just one through five, nothing else. And I want you to classify each triangle based on its angle name. Classify each triangle based on its angle name. All right, ready to go. I've only, take a look up here, you should have come up with these classifications. Who got all five right? Let me see around the room. All five. All five. All five. Good, 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 good. All right. Okay, good. Okay, that's one way we can group things, right? Like, I could group you guys in this classroom by, you know, groups of last names, like A through G and H through M and, you know, whatever through Z. Like, I could put you in different groups and classify you that way. I could also classify you by hair length. All right, I can put you in different groups by hair length. So whatever the category is that I'm classifying by, that will change the way I organize things. Okay, well, another way that we can classify our triangles or organize them is by side information, by side information. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a couple changes to these pictures first. So the first thing I want to do is on the second picture, I'm going to put two congruency marks here. And on the third picture, I'm going to put one here and one, two here and one, two, three here like that. Okay. So I added two congruency marks here and then I added one, two, and three on this third triangle over here. Okay. Now we've already seen this first triangle, right? We just talked about it up above. So we know that this one is called an equilateral. Okay. So when it's given with the three congruent sides, we know we're talking about an equilateral triangle. But here's what I want you to do. Okay. You ready for some instructions? I want you to put some congruence arcs on the angles inside the triangle. And I want to use the same number of arcs that are found in the hash marks on the sides of the triangle that the angle is projecting toward. Okay, let me say that again. I want you to put congruence arcs inside the triangle, and I want you to use the same number of arcs on each angle that matches the hash mark on the side of the triangle the angle is projecting to, the side that's influenced by the angle. Like, for example, this angle right here is projecting to, put your finger on the side it's projecting to right now. Put your finger on the side that that angle is projecting to. You should have put your finger on this side right here. Yeah? How many hash marks are on this side right here? So then that means we're going to put one congruence arc here. Ah, okay. Got it. You see what I'm doing? Good point. The answer is yes. Because all equilateral triangles are equiangular. However, because the information we're being given here are the side lengths, and we're classifying by side length, we're going to call it equilateral. Okay? Now, if we keep going with this process, we would put one arc here, one arc here. And that would match our picture from up above, right? Essentially, it's the opposite of what we did initially, right? All right. So then let's do the same thing here. First off, can you tell me the name of this triangle? We got two sides that are congruent and one side that's not. Anybody remember this one? This is isosceles, very good. Very good, Jane, isosceles. Because I added these and I did that particularly to say this side is not congruent to these two sides here. 
because this is an isosceles triangle. If this was one mark here, then that would make it an equilateral triangle. Right? And so we want an isosceles triangle. That's where we have two congruent sides and one not congruent. All right. Here's what I want you to do. Matching congruence arcs on the angle that matches the hash marks on the side that it's projecting toward. Go for it. What? Put that. Yes? All right. Now, there's some important vocabulary that goes with this. So let's jot this down. Okay. The two congruent angles in an isosceles triangle are called the base angles. This one and this one. You need to know this language. So the two congruent angles are called the base angles. The non-congruent angle up here is called the vertex angle. Okay, got those vocabulary words? Two congruent angles are called the base angles and then the non-congruent one is called the vertex angle. Now, here's the thing. When we see these triangles drawn like this, we could say, oh, hey, okay, so the base angle's base, bottom. Yeah, they're the triangle, the angles that are on the bottom. However, what if I were to do something like this? Give me just a second. I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to go like this, and then I'm going to go like that. Okay, and now take a look at the picture. Right, because I can spin this triangle around in a whole bunch of different kinds of ways, right? And you might think to yourself, well, this is probably closer to the bottom than this, so my base angles must be these two angles here. But that's not true. The base angles are the two angles that are congruent to each other, okay? And how do you find those two angles? Well, you look for the congruent side, what angle is projecting to that side. You look for the congruent side, what angle is projecting to that side? Ava, Kendall. All right, so the idea is, given two congruent sides, you should be able to identify what the two congruent angles are. Or given two congruent base angles, you should be able to identify what two sides in the triangle are congruent. You gotta be able to bounce back and forth on both of those. Okay, does that make sense? Questions? Everybody good? All right, we're gonna go back the other direction here for our notes. All right. Lastly, we've got a triangle, and I want you to put some matching arcs inside this triangle, matching the hash marks to the side that the angle's projecting toward. Go ahead, put some arcs in this one. That right there, yeah? Okay, now, let me just give you a little disclaimer. Not every math problem is going to be written this way. This is not some hard and fast geometry rule that the hash marks have to match the arc marks inside. That's not what we're doing here. What I'm doing with you here is helping you understand that the size of an angle has a direct relationship to its opposite side's length. And that's why I'm having you match these marks in this scenario. Okay. All right. Does anybody remember the name of this one? So we had equilateral, we have isosceles, and then we have the one that doesn't have any congruent sides. It begins with an S. Scalene. There you go. This is the scalene triangle. Okay? All right. Okay, now, let's put this all together. Well, actually, let me have you do this first. So I'm going to have you classify these triangles here. Now, in this picture... If you do not have a congruence mark, then that's saying it's not congruent to anything other in particular. So only what's stated is what you know. What isn't stated, you don't know for sure. So you can only go with what you do know. Like I said, you can't assume a 90 degree angle. It may look like it, but if that marker's not there, or you can't give yourself a reason, then you can't know it for sure, okay? Go ahead and classify these triangles by their side names, by their side names. have come up with scalene first isosceles second equilateral third good yeah everybody good yes. all right cool okay now we're gonna put the whole thing together all right so look when i print up my attendance rosters of my classes i print them up and i keep them organized like this last name comma first name so that all of your guys' names are organized down my list by last name and then I can keep track of that alphabetically. Same with this naming of triangles. There's a particular way in which we do things 
when we name our triangles, we are going to name them angles, comma, sides. So we're going to name our triangles angles, comma, sides. So like, let's take number nine, for example. Let's start with the angle classification. Which grouping does number nine fit in in terms of the angle classifications? That's a right triangle, right? Now, let's also talk about what group does it fit in according to its side classifications? Two congruent sides, so isosceles. So then we would name this triangle a right isosceles triangle. That's going to be a big one for us in trig. Right isosceles triangle. Okay, let's see what you can do with number 10. Angle comma side name for number 10. Angle comma side name. Ready to go. Come up with obtuse scalene is the right answer. Obtuse scalene. All right, let's see how you do at number 11. Come up with an answer for me for number 11. Go ahead. You should have come up with equiangular equilateral. Now, Jane, you bring up an excellent point. I want to address that. Thank you for saying that. Okay, so what, what did you what did you initially say the classification should be? Acute equilateral, right? Is that wrong? Do we have an acute triangle? Yes, we do have an acute triangle, correct? All the angles are less than 90 degrees. So by definition, that's not wrong. However, because they're all the same, we can give it a more specific name. It's not just a student, it's a panther. See what I'm saying? And so we want to call it by its most specific name every time. So just like, remember, let me draw you back. We had angle addition postulate, but we had complementary angles, which was angle addition postulate to 90. And we had linear pairs, which were angle addition postulates 180 and they're adjacent. Right? It's a more specific naming. And so in this case, we want to use the more specific naming of equiangular, equilateral, and not just acute. Make sense? Okay. So always try to use the more specific name if possible. All right, good. Uh, questions? Everybody good on naming triangles? Yes. Okay. I'm going to give you four minutes. I want you to do 12 through 20. All right. Now listen, in, in 15 through 20, there are certain pieces of information given to you up here. And you're welcome to use those pieces of information to help you figure out certain things and other things we've talked about. However, you're not allowed to use things we haven't talked about because that's the beauty of geometry. We have to build on what we've talked about, not necessarily what you talked about in another class some other year. So let's see what you did. Okay, I'll give you four minutes, 12 through 20. Ready to go. Take a look, see how you did. 12, 13, and 14 should be pretty easy, yeah? Yes. Okay, let me talk just quickly. I'm going to zoom in past 12, 13, and 14. Let me just talk about the bottom ones here and point out a couple of things that you should have pulled away from this information, right? So it says up at the top that PR bisects angle SRT. That means that angle SRT here is cut into two parts, two equal parts. So if the top part is 30 degrees, the bottom part has to be 30 degrees. Right. Another thing that you should have picked up with is U is the midpoint of RT. So this is the halfway point of RT. So if we know that from R to U is eight meters with a single congruency mark, and we've got the other half over here, that's got to be eight meters with a single congruency mark. And then all single congruency marks have to be eight meters because whatever's marked the same way has to be the same. And so that makes this an equilateral triangle. The other one that you could have picked up to is vertical angles here, right? Vertical angles that are across from each other when two straight paths cross. <coughs> that was from our last assessment. Okay? Questions? Okay? Not too bad? All right, good. Um, we're not going to do a whole lot of uh, stuff on these questions here, but I want to show you that you can do them. Okay? So um, let's talk about this for a second. So we need to find the measures of triangle JKL, and that would be like on a coordinate grid because we have like X, Y ordered pairs, right? So I want you to do this with me. Let's just draw up here, just kind of a little scratch graph. Just draw yourself a little X, Y coordinate grid up here like that. And we're just going to ballpark some points. Like we're going to ballpark negative 7, negative 7, 
is going to be like here-ish, right? And we'll just call that J. And K is going to be at negative 9 and positive 1. So negative 9 and positive 1 is probably going to be like here-ish, like that, K. And then L is going to be at negative 1, negative 1. So, I don't know, like here-ish, like that, right? That's going to be L. And if we connect those points together, you can see we've got ourselves a triangle on a coordinate grid. And if we wanted to classify this triangle in terms of its side lengths, we would need to know how long are each of these sides. What tool do we have for determining how long a segment is on a coordinate grid? Two units back. It's a version of Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, it comes from Pythagorean theorem. Like if we could go like this and this and create a right triangle, we could find that side, right? What, what, the, what was the shortcut? Not Maybe it doesn't feel like a shortcut to you, but it's what a mathematician's shortcut would be for finding that. Anybody remember that one? Like if we wanted to know this distance right here, we would say the distance from K to L is like something like this. Uh, is this is uh, a little Pythagorean theorem. Oh, yeah, a little x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. Yeah, distance formula, right? Yeah. Okay, we're not going to do all of these because it's a lot of work and I don't really want to do all of these right now. But I just want you to know you could do these because you're familiar with distance formula. You would just have to find the length of jk, kl, jl by running three distance formulas. And then if you got two numbers that were exactly the same and one number that was different, what classification would you give this triangle? Let me say it again. If you got two numbers that were exactly the same, two lengths that were the same, and one that wasn't, that would make it an isosceles triangle. And since we don't know anything about the angles, we would just call it an isosceles triangle. Get the idea? Okay, good. All right. So we'll just leave that at that for now. I'm not going to have you do those questions. But. All right. Next order of business. So here we go. Next order of business. We're going to be working on setting up and solving some algebra problems using what we know about triangles. Now, first off, I'm not a big fan of the fact that this curriculum tried to work in a measurement right here. This is 49 meters, but it could very easily be confused for a third variable. And we don't want that, especially since we already have an X and a Y. That's just a meters thing. Let's cross that out. We're not going to utilize that. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that. That way we don't confuse anybody. All right. What kind of a triangle is triangle ABC? Well, it says it right there. It's what? Equilateral. It's equilateral. Put some congruence marks where you think that you should put them based on the fact that this is an equilateral triangle. Go ahead and do that. Should have done that. Yeah. All right. Your job is to solve for X and Y. Ready? Go. If you're moving in the right direction, you should have been heading this way here. Right? Equilateral triangles, things are equal to each other. Keep going. Here you go. You should have come up with x equals 16 and y equals 5. Easy? Pretty simple. What's that? Well, if that was all we were going to do, we would just stop. But we're going to keep going because that's all we're going to do today. All right. Here we go. Number two, equilateral triangle. Why don't you put some congruence marks where you think they should go? Go ahead. We'll start with that. Do yours look like mine? No? Why not? Why do mine look different? Because I felt like putting two. Is that all right with you guys? Yeah, you put it whatever you want. It doesn't matter, right? Because really, it's a new problem. So I can put one, or I can put two, or I can put seven. What is important is whatever I put on one side, I better put on the other two sides because it's an equilateral triangle. <laughs> yeah. 
Some of you were so offended. <laughs> All right. Now listen, hey, hang on, hold on. All right, look. So you're going to solve for x in order to use that to find the length of each side. What I want you to do is I want you to solve for x in this space of your paper right here so that you can leave this space of your paper for showing me how you're going to find the lengths of the sides. Okay? So in the middle here, go ahead and solve for x, and then we'll write something down over here so I can show you how I want your work. But let's start with solving for x. Ready to go. Okay, right direction should have been heading this way. Maybe, maybe you should have been heading that way. That's not the only way you could have headed though, right? Yeah, so like, here's what I did, right? I went ST is equal to RT. But you know what? ST is also equal to SR. For that matter, SR is also equal to RT. So there's three different ways you could set this up, right? All right, but the good news is whatever you did, however you set it up, you should have gotten here. Right? So even with different equations, you're still going to come up with x equals 8. Everybody good so far? Okay. Now, Here's what I want you to do here, okay? So what I want you to do here is I want you to write the three side lengths like this. Now, you're going to show me here, here, and here the work that's needed to produce the length of the three sides. All right, go ahead and do that. Should have come up with these three lengths here. 74 units, 74 units, and 74 units. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, Mr. Vargas, this is an equilateral triangle. I really only need to find one of these true unless you did it wrong you could check your work by doing all three and then if they all three show up correctly you know you got that problem right so i'm gonna make you do that so show the work for all three of them don't just assume that it's equilateral get the idea everybody okay so far all right good all right we're gonna skip a few here because we're not doing all these questions today so let's drop down and let's talk about number, oh, how about, yeah, let's talk about four. All right. Four is an isosceles triangle with side DE congruent to side EF. <coughs> Why don't you put some congruence marks where you think they need to go and then Start setting up an algebra problem to solve for x to find the measure of all three sides. I'll give you some steps as we go along, all right? Go ahead. So we'll go congruence, set up your algebra problem, solve and write out the work for showing me the three side lengths. Ready to go. All right, here's your congruence marks. You should have put those down. Okay, now you're working on setting up a problem. Your algebra problem set up by now. Here's what your setup should have looked like. All right. And now you're going to solve and find your side lanes. Ready to go. Should have come up with these answers here. How many people got all those right? Let me see all the way around the room. Yes, good. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. Let's, uh, let's go on to the back side. Let's talk about number six. Uh-oh. Actually, number seven. Let's go to number seven. Let's talk about number seven. So number seven, triangle STU is an equilateral triangle. 
if ST is one less than twice X and SU is 37 less than five times X and TU is 11 more than X, what? What? find X in the measure of each side. And there's no pictures. We could make a picture. Let's do that. Let's start with that. How about you do this? Let's make a picture. Let's put some congruence marks where we think congruence marks are supposed to go. And on the picture, let's write in the letters of the triangle, right? So, okay, so we'll, we'll do this first one together. So we got an equilateral triangle. So it's probably going to look something like this-ish here, right? I mean, we need to extend that side down just a little bit more like that. Can you fix that? There we go. Okay. All right. So let's do this. We know that we have three congruent sides. So that we're all operating on the same page, let's just let's just name our triangle the same way. So let's all call this S. We'll all call this T. We'll all call this U. Now what I want you to do is I want you to write in the algebra here, here, and here on the picture based on what you can pull from the problem up here. Let's see what you can do, okay? So you're writing the algebraic expressions for the lengths of the three sides based on what you can pull from the problem. Go ahead, give it a try. All right, here you go. You should have put these down on the sides of your triangles. Yeah, everybody good? Okay, then you should be able to solve this problem so, yeah. Well, you know what? Actually, let's do this. Let's not solve this one right now. Let's not solve this one right now. Let's go down. So, you have you know what you would do to solve this one, right? You got the right idea? Okay. Let's go down to number 10. Let's do number 10. So, let's start by drawing a picture and let's put some labels and congruence marks and algebra on the sides of the pictures like we just did. So, let's draw a picture for number 10. All right, go ahead and do picture for number 10. Let's see what you come up with. This time you do it all on your own, however you want to do it, but let's see if it lines up with what I got for you. Number 10. Should have come up with something that looks like that. Now your letters might be in different places and that's okay as long as the side that stretches between G and I, wherever it is, has a 6x minus 45 on it. That's important. And the side that stretches between I and H has a 4X minus 17 on it. That's important. And these two sides have congruence marks that match. That's important. <coughs> Wherever you position them, those things need to be in place. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. I want you to finish 7 and 10. Ready, go. for seven and ten see how you did uh, good good there's ten there's seven there's seven and ten okay all right let's talk homework all right so homework is going to be pages five and six that I hand out to you right now. However, we're not going to do the two distance formula questions, which are number 10 and 11. Okay, so everything else on here on pages five and six is your homework. No number 10, no number 11, we won't do the distance formula questions. There you go. Now, all those extra problems that we didn't finish, those would be good ones to save and use for studying for your tests. <laughs> Need a few extra practice problems. When I do post the answers for this lesson, you'll have the answers for the ones that we did not do here in class. All right. Okie dokie. Good job today, you guys.